Welcome to Ogu's Training. Ogu's is an integrated training platform for the oil and gas sector. In this presentation you will get an overview of the basics of oil and gas wells, their design, completion and operation. You will also come to know about the basic safety systems that are in place to protect against any upset condition and any unsafe conditions that may result out of that. If you happen to pass by any oil and gas field like in Calgary, Alberta or in the oil and gas fields in the Middle Eastern countries, a view similar to these pictures are common. These are the wells, through which the crude oil and gas comes out to the surface of the earth from deep underground. An well is a boring into the earth, that is designed to bring the petroleum hydrocarbons to the surface from the underground reservoir. The upstream oil and gas sector is mostly about wells, how and where and how many of them to drill, how to operate and maintain them safety and optimally for maximizing the production, and how to safely abandon them at the end of the field's life. Well drilling process may take anywhere between 21 days to a few months depending on the location, that is onshore or shallow offshore or deep water, type of reservoir formation, depth of the well and the complexity of the reservoir. The drilling begins with drilling a large diameter hole and the diameter is gradually reduced in stages as the drilling is advanced. After completion of each stage, the drill string is retrieved to the surface and a smaller diameter drill bit is fixed to the drill string. Usually at lesser depths drilling is carried out by a method called air drilling and drilling at greater depths, usually below the surface casing, utilizes drilling mud. Drilling mud or drilling fluid can be either oil-based or water-based, and is a mixture of bentonite clay, special polymers and thickeners. The major purpose of the drilling fluid or mud is to provide hydrostatic pressure to prevent the reservoir fluid coming to the surface uncontrollably. It is very important to keep track of the level in the mud tank and monitor the rate of incoming and outgoing mud flow. The mud also brings back the rock cuttings to the surface, keeps the drill bit cool and provides lubrication to the drill bit. After completion of each stage of the drilling, a hard alloy steel protective casing is cemented in place. The casing prevents groundwater from seeping in and also prevents mixing of reservoir fluids from mixing with the groundwater. The casing also keeps the well from collapsing and thereby maintains integrity. The initial or conductor casing goes for the first 50 to 80 meters underground. The second stage of casing is called the surface casing. An intermediate casing sometimes is put through when the drilling is halfway to completion. The drilling continues with a smaller diameter drill bit and at the end the drill string is retracted to the surface and another casing, called production casing, is put all through the borehole. All these casing are cemented to prevent any fluid passing through the casings. The well is pressure tested after each layer of casing is installed. The production tubing is installed through the production casing. A packer is installed between the production tubing and the production casing. Production packers are devices that seal the tubing to the casing annulus and force the produced fluids from the wellbore into the completion tubing. After the well is drilled and production tubing is installed, the tubing is perforated with a perforation gun to create a pathway for the reservoir fluids to move inside the well bore and come to the surface. Nowadays downhole temperature and pressure sensors are installed to continuously monitor the reservoir pressure and temperature. In the description section you may find videos that show the drilling process in more detail in animation format. Conventionally wells are drilled vertically. But today with the advent of new directional drilling technology, drilling through the reservoir rock for kilometers together is possible. It has made it possible to produce a large section of the reservoir from a single well. After the certain depth is reached, a special tool is inserted through the drill string. The tool allows to gradually turn the drill string until a horizontal pathway is reached. Horizontal drilling has opened up new avenues to produce the so-called tight reservoirs like shale. After the horizontal drilling is completed, the reservoir rock is fractured by injecting a mixture of high-pressure sand, water and chemicals. A single horizontal well can effectively produce the same reservoir as that of up to 30 conventional vertical wells. Wellhead is the structure that forms the interface between the subsurface or drilling components and the surface or production components. Wellheads provide the suspension point and pressure seals for the casing strings that run from the bottom of the borehole to the surface. 
Well heads are typically welded onto the first string of casing, which has been cemented in place during drilling operations, to form an integral structure of the well. The well head consists of the casing head, casing hangers, the tubing head, tubing head adapter and the tubing hanger. X-mass tree is the valve assembly for well control from the surface. It is usually flange connected to the well head. It consists of gate valves called, from the lower to the uppermost in sequence, lower master valve, upper master valve, swab or crown valve, production wing valve and kill wing valve. The upper master valve is usually remotely operated. The production flow line is attached to the production wing valve through a choke, which acts as a flow control valve. The choke can be either adjustable or may have a fixed opening. The integrity of the X-mass tree valves, casings, and the wellhead seals must be checked regularly by way of pressure testing. Bop or blowout preventer is a valve assembly that can be hydraulically controlled from a remote location away from the drilling platform. It allows well control remotely during a loss of well control scenario, thereby closing the well and saving from a potential disaster. SCSSV or Surface Controlled Subsurface Safety Valve is a hydraulically operated device that allows the well to be shut in from the surface in case of loss of well control during production. By pulling a knob on the wellhead control panel, the operator can release the hydraulic pressure that holds the downhole device open, thereby shutting the well. Usually the upper master valve and in some cases also the production wing valve is made hydraulically controlled through the wellhead control panel, these are known as SSV or surface safety valve. The wells are usually equipped with fire and gas detector to prevent against potential fire or leaks. The fire and gas detection panel is linked with the wellhead control panel so that on detection the well can be automatically shut to prevent any escalation of the situation. Depending on the reservoir pressure available, different types of lifting methods are employed to bring the reservoir fluid up to the surface. Natural flow wells are those which have sufficient pressure in the reservoir to lift the oil and water mixture to the surface. These wells do not need any special arrangement for lifting the fluid. Beam pumps are piston pump used where the reservoir pressure has dropped and that there is no or little gas in the reservoir. These downhole pumps are connected to the motor though a gearbox and a structure called beam and horsehead, which is attached to a rod line that goes inside the well through a staffing box. Beam pumps produce 5 to 40 liters of liquid per stroke. Gas lifts are employed for handling well fluid volumes larger than beam pump wells and where the reservoir contains some gas but not enough to lift the fluid up to the surface. Gas is injected through the casing into the well fluid through a series of gas lift mandrels. The gas mixes with the well fluid and creates bubbles thereby making it lighter. The lighter fluid can be pushed by the reservoir pressure up to the surface. For a successful gas lift project to work, compressed gas must be available in the facility. ESP or electrical submersible pumps are centrifugal pumps which are installed downhole for handling large volume of preferably light and low viscosity crude oil and water mixture. PCP or progressive cavity pumps are helical gear pumps and are used for wells characterized by highly viscous fluid and high sand cut. These positive displacement pumps are so called due to the continuously reducing cavity or area as the fluid progresses. In out next video we will discuss about surface processing facilities for the fluid produced through the wells. We hope you liked this video, do leave your comments and subscribe to our channel for more such informative videos.